Hi everyone, and welcome to Lazy Lion. We can't help thinking about this next anime without getting nostalgic. If you saw this anime back when it first came out in the early 2000s, then perhaps you'll understand the struggle. The struggle all early anime fans from the West faced. Back in the day, if you wanted to watch an anime that wasn't playing on TV, you had to pray to the rental video store gods that they, one, even had an anime section, and two, that you'd be lucky enough to have someone who worked there who thought getting the latest volume in a yet relatively unknown genre was worthy of attention. We were lucky enough to find Volume 1 of Hayabne Renme at Blockbuster, and practically waited in vain for over a decade for Volume 2, which never came. Fortunately, as time went on, anime became much more accessible, and we were finally able to watch the whole Hayabne Renme series in full. And let us tell you, the wait was worth it. What captivated us all those years ago as kids still held true now. Actually, even more so, because now we were able to catch all the little nuances and themes we'd previously missed, or just weren't able to fully comprehend. Hybne Renme is a wistful yet beautiful 13-episode anime series by Studio Radix Ace Entertainment that delves into some pretty heavy topics, such as death and suicide, but does so in such an insightful way that it's definitely deserving of notice. It won't be everyone's cup of tea, but if you're looking for a poignant tale about forgiveness and moving on, then this is for you. Just make sure you have some tissues ready because this anime is sure to have you bawling your eyes out before the end of it. I'm not crying. You're crying. The story starts by showing a girl falling through the sky, and as she falls, she's joined by a crow. The girl feels strangely comforted by the crow's presence, and when the crow grabs hold of the hem of her dress, futilely trying to prevent her from falling, she smiles and calmly tells it, And so the crow lets go, and the girl continues to fall until she's met by a blinding light. The next thing we see is the same girl floating in this sort of water-filled cocoon. Hearing voices on the other side of the cocoon walls, she claws her way through, only to wake up and find herself in the presence of a group of young girls all gathered around her. But these aren't ordinary girls. These girls are called Hybne, and they have tiny charcoal gray wings and halos. Things get even more bizarre when they ask her, So, what did you see in your dream? This is how Raka, who was named after her dream about falling, starts her life in Old Home, an old, run-down building on the outskirts of the town of Gri, surrounded by a 30-meter high wall. She lives there with the other Hybne, for it turns out that Raka is also a Hybne. Soon her own set of wings grow in, and she's given a halo, something that would have many people question. So, are the Hybne angels then? According to the creator of Hybne Renme, Yoshitoshi Abe, the answer is no. So what is a Hybne then? All we know is that the Hybne are different from the other residents of Guri, appearing mysteriously out of nowhere and are typically in their teens. The Hybne have a feeling that they had lives outside of Guri with families and friends, but can't remember any of it, not even remembering their own names, meaning that even if they were able to get beyond the walls, they probably wouldn't recognize their parents even if they saw them. There are many hints throughout the anime that imply that the Hybne have died in their previous lives and have been reborn here in Gri. But why? What's so special about Gri? The Hybne are thought of as blessings within the town, and are monitored by a group called the Hybne Renme, who are there to help and facilitate their lives in Guri. 
To do this, the Hibernae are given a set of rules in which to follow. Number one, a Hibernae may only own things that are second hand. Number two, they must find employment to earn their keep. Number three, they are not to possess or handle any money. And lastly, number four, the Hibernae are not to, under any circumstances, go near the wall. Why these rules? As the show continues, it becomes apparent that the Hibernae's time in Gri is limited. Gri is more like a resting stop before their train arrives and is ready to take them to their next destination. Similar to like what we see in movies like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows and Spirited Away. The day that their metaphorical train arrives is called the Day of Flight where the Hibernae in question will walk into the western woods without the notice of the others. And then they'll be surrounded by a beam of light and disappear, leaving behind only their forged halo. The way we interpreted this was that since Gri is only a sort of rest stop before their final destination, the Hibernae are there to overcome certain things that are holding them back from moving on such as feelings of guilt, fear, loneliness, despair, grief, anxiety, etc. We believe that the rules are there to guide the Hibernae through this process and limit distractions. If they can only own things that are second-hand, then they are less likely to form attachments to material things. If they busy themselves with work, it will give them purpose and satisfaction. If they do not own money, then they will be less tempted by greed. If the Hibernae are discouraged from seeking what lies beyond the wall, then they might be more likely to focus on what's on the inside, giving them a place to self-reflect. Even the fact that they have no memories of their past lives forces them to live in the moment without anchors. Those Hibernae who are unable to overcome their hurdles will cease to be Hibernae and will lose their wings and halo, being figuratively forever stuck in a limbo that is the town of Gri. If this is sounding religious to anyone, we don't blame you. But which religion is harder to pinpoint since Yoshitoshi Abe didn't use only one religion as a basis for his story? There are many elements from Buddhism, Shinto, and Christianity, as well as some shamanistic-like religions peppered throughout the story, which makes Hibane Renmei less religious per se and more spiritual. This makes sense since most religions at their cores have always been more of a conduit to help humanity make sense of the world and our place in it. So what's the meaning of it all? While watching this anime, you're bound to have a lot of questions, but this anime is vague on purpose. As Yoshitoshi Abe has stated, it is not a story to find answers, but one to wonder about the answers. Think for yourself and apply your own answers to it. That will surely make this story very special for you. The reason behind this is probably due to Abe's own approach to writing Hibne Renmei which he did in an attempt to examine ideas and answers in as organic a way as possible. In our opinion, this is one of the most fascinating things about the creation of Hibernate Renmei. Yoshitoshi wrote the story without any general idea of what the story would be about or where it would end up, citing that he wanted to let his subconscious guide him, making it a sort of writing experiment. Certain elements from one of his favorite novels, Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Murakami Haruki and the Japanese film Afterlife have found their way into Hibne Renme, as have some of Abe's own personal experiences, which is only natural. What is the subconscious if not a collection of mental imagery and information gathered over the course of our lifetimes, randomly stored away for further processing? Your mind's own Pinterest archive, if you will. Which makes watching Hibne Renme an insightful experience in and of itself, and one not to be missed. 
It's not often we're presented with works that deal with such sensitive topics and that are handled in such a mindful way. So, on that note, if you like animes and mangas that deal with heavier and darker issues, or if you enjoy animes like Serial Experiments Lane, which Yoshitoshi Abe did the character designs for, then you're likely to also enjoy Haibne Renmei as well. For those of you curious about the show, or those of you who just like to rewatch it, it's currently available over on Funimation. And feel free to let us know about your own Hibane Renmei interpretations down in the comments below. We'd love to hear everybody's theories and thoughts. There's a lot we didn't mention here so as not to spoil too much. It is only 13 episodes after all. But if you guys are curious about some of our theories, we do delve into those further over on our blog. Now, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. Stay obsessed.